Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And the first thing, of course, announcements, diet, lifestyle, and invention course and package offers for summer. Um, this is the every couple, three years when we invite all the celebrity instructors like Dr. Ralph Moss and Dr. Alan Goldhammer, Dr. Neil Bernard, Dr. Esselstyn, the whole gang um, that we only do this every couple, three years. So if you are thinking of taking this course, this might be the year that you want to do it. So if you want some information about some of um, about that course, and some of the other courses that can be uh, enrolled in with it, like irritable bowel and PCOS, and we have all kinds of great stuff coming up. Pampopper at MSN.com. A um, couple things from the news. Well, I'll start with some feedback. First of all, thank you so much to the lovely person who posted 11 times about, is it my diet that makes me so ugly? Great thoughts. I think that uh, great intellectual capacity being demonstrated there with those types of comments. You know, if nothing else, some of the comments that you guys post are, are really good for a comedic relief here at the office when we're in need of such a thing. Um, but uh, now down to something serious. There were some comments back and forth about this uh, video that I put out last week on. Um, organic versus non-organic and and I, I understand the conundrum people trying to figure out okay what do I do and and it is difficult because I think what we don't know is more than what we do know about sprays and how much pesticide residue and um, I don't know about you but the way I come away from that video last week and the information that I shared is I don't I didn't trust the government before I put all that information together um, it certainly didn't do anything to make me trust the government, right? So I don't trust what they're saying. If they say something safe, that doesn't necessarily make it so. So I think what we have to do is come down to basics here, which is that, um, first of all, nobody disagrees with this statement. It is good to eat a lot of plant food, okay? Um, now, we can get in the weeds about this group says beans are bad for you and this group says grains are bad for you, but really plant-based diets are best and the more you eat of it the better. Um, is there some pesticide or herbicide um, exposure as a result of eating plant food? I think you probably can't get away with that even if you're choosing organic foods and so I guess the point that I was trying to make last week and I'll reiterate it here because I think it really is important is that um, there are issues of availability there are issues of affordability that have to be considered. And, um, and then, of course, a value system that may influence what you do. But I think on the basis of affordability and availability, people should just do their best to eat as much plant food as they can. And that may mean that a lot of what they eat is not organic, um, or even eating some organic food that probably has more chemical residue than we would like for it to have. But um, at some point in time, you just have to put that out of your mind and do the best you can, because if we get worried about this every day, I mean, think about it, if you're really worried about this five or six times a day when you eat, this is a preoccupation that certainly isn't going to lead to health and happiness and living a great life, right? So I don't want to sound like I don't care about risk because I really do, but I don't want to live my life um, worrying about the next bad thing that's going to happen, particularly things I can't control because there just is a lot in this world that you can't control. And if you spend a lot of time thinking about it and um, obsessing about it, it just, like I said, it doesn't lead to a great, happy life. So I hope that clarifies. And I do really understand the, like, what the heck do I do kind of um, response to some of the information that I put out, not just on that topic, but a lot of things, all right? Um, here are a couple of questions that I got that deserve a little bit of comment, I think. One is um, a person wrote to me and said, what type of alternative sweetener is best for a diabetic who does not like stevia? And my answer to that is none of them. And my answer to that is also a diabetic who thinks that things are going to get better by changing the sweetener is probably not really understanding the science very much because then we get into rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. That's what I call that strategy. So, um, and of course the question that follows sometimes is then, well, what's somebody supposed to do if they're not willing to make big changes and they just want to use alternative sweetener? Well, my comment is let them use alternative sweetener. It doesn't matter which one because none of them work for controlling weight or diabetes and it would be fine to use white sugar or whatever else you wanted to use to sweeten it because that's not going to change the diabetic condition. And if a person is not motivated 
to eat their way out of type 2 diabetes? I don't have an answer for that. It's sort of like, what do you say to, what does a financial planner say to somebody who says, I want to retire comfortably, but I don't want to save money? Well, we don't have any shortcuts or solutions for that. You're either going to be financially responsible or you're not going to be financially responsible. So anyway, um, not much help. I can't be much help to people who don't want to help themselves in meaningful ways. I'm sorry to say that. Another one is, do chemicals and shampoos and soaps cause cancer? I don't think we have any evidence of that. And I think there's a lot of hysteria over it without any cause and effect relationship established. Here's what I can say about shampoos and lotions and body washes and that sort of thing that contain a lot of chemicals. They're not very good for your skin. I mean, the reality is that people who use higher quality products on their skin and hair usually are a lot happier with the way their skin and hair looks than when they use lower quality products. But I don't think that your shampoo is going to cause you to have cancer, all right? And, um, and then one other question that got asked that's a little hard to just type out a long response to is a person in response to the, um, uh, the video clip on fecal transplant for autistic people, which um, had a profound positive effect. Um, it, it, unfortunately, fecal transplant is not an available option legally in the United States unless you're involved in a clinical trial. So the question was, can you help somebody who can't get a fecal transplant? And the answer is yes. Um, there are a lot, lots you can do with diet, a lot you can do with probiotics, a lot you can do with intense behavioral therapy, and many other things. And we do have an autism course if that interests you. So anyway, some answers to questions that come up. And um, I talk better than I type. So if I, can, <laughs> if I can answer questions. And I also think that some of these things are interesting to the entire audience here, which, by the way, we've hit the next benchmark of over 25,000 subscribers. So we're going to draw somebody's name and announce next week. You may get a couple hundred dollars certificate uh, for some courses here. So I'll let you know when we do the drawing. All right, interesting article. I, I am not an ophthalmologist or an expert on eye health, um, but uh, I can read the medical literature, and I came across an article the last week that I thought was interesting concerning diet and eye health um, that I, I think is worth sharing. So, according to a new study, diet can contribute to diseases of the eye like age-related macular degeneration, or AMD which is caused by several factors, including smoking, high blood pressure, and being overweight. Um, a lot of it is controllable. Uh, so, so diet is not the only factor that is involved in lifestyle habits on vision, but, but it's a pro all of your diet and lifestyle habits have, a fa have an effect. Um, AMD affects central vision, which is used for tasks like reading and driving, and it's one of the leading causes of blindness in westernized countries. Well, the researchers in this study looked at how retinal pigment epithelial, or RPE, cells in the eye are affected and damaged by dietary choices, and they determined that foods that are higher in fat and cholesterol damage these cells. The mechanism of action is that the waste disposal system of the RPEs becomes disrupted by a high-fat diet, causing long-term damage. This damage then causes the cells to become less able to support the eye's photoreceptors, and death of the photoreceptors results in permanent sight loss. Previous research has confirmed that lipids accumulate in the macula, and lipids extracted from the site included phospholipids, triglycerides, fatty acids, and cholesterol. The relationship between cholesterol intake and vision loss has been confirmed by other researchers too. The cholesterol metabolite 27-OHC is toxic to RPE cells, and high levels of 27-OHC are not only a factor in the development of AMD, but also Alzheimer's disease. And I'm going to cover this in a different, um, well, I'm, I'm doing a course on cognitive disorders and Alzheimer's disease this summer. But um, when I started looking into this, I found quite a few studies, which I archived on my server, about the relationship between vision loss and Alzheimer's disease, that vision loss is a predictor of Alzheimer's disease. So I found that very interesting. Many other studies have shown a connection between fat and AMD, and the same connection holds for plant fats, not just saturated fat and animal foods. A meta-analysis showed that AMD, AMD risk is, quote, directly associated with the level of total fat intake, end of quote, particularly in younger women. The researchers state that high-fat diets could be a marker for overall unhealthy eating habits, and also that fat intake may be displacing nutrient-dense plant foods, which could explain the relationship. However, the association between fat of all types and AMD persisted despite adjusting for levels of nutrients like lutein, a phytochemical known to be beneficial for the eye in the diet. 
a case control study, including 349 people with advanced AMD and 504 controls showed that higher intake of vegetable, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fats increased the risk of advanced AMD. A retrospective population study of residents of Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, between the ages of 45 and 84 years of age, showed that those in the top quintile for saturated fat and cholesterol intake had 80% and 60% higher risk of AMD, respectively. The researchers adjusted for many factors like carotenoid intake, um, vitamin supplements, smoking, BMI, time spent outdoors in the summer, gender, history of diabetes, hypertension, or cardiovascular disease. The association between saturated fat, cholesterol, and vision still held, held true after adjusting for all of those things. Animal studies have shown the same result. New Zealand rabbits fed a diet high in cholesterol showed retinal degeneration that is a symptom of AMD in humans. Another study included the same type of rabbits who were randomized to eat a standard diet or one with added cholesterol. After eight months, rabbits eating the higher cholesterol diet had structural changes in the retina similar to those that we see in humans with AMD. The negative effects of saturated fat and cholesterol go beyond the things that we talk about the most often. Of course, they increase the risk of cancer and heart disease and, and type 2 diabetes. High fat and cholesterol intake are associated with an awful lot of other health issues too, uh, like AMD, which are not discussed quite as often, but are nonetheless incredibly negatively life-altering. So I have a message for people who have chosen to eat a paleo diet or a ketogenic diet or even vegan keto, which is somewhat fashionable now because that's plant fat, but it still causes a problem according to these studies here. Um, you might want to reconsider your choice. It is true that many people, at least in the short term, lose weight while eating a paleo or a keto diet, but the long-term health consequences are just not worth it. I have never met a person who has become blind or near blind as a result of their bad habits, who has said, sitting in this office, well, I know I can't see or drive or read labels, but, you know, all that fat eating and cheese eating, it was sure worth it for me. Nobody ever says that, people. So, you know, sometimes you have to look intellectually at these issues. Kind of goes back to where I started with the nasty comments about, is my diet making me look old? You know, let, let's try to get this to be a discussion that's intellectually driven, in fact, and evidence driven, and with some consideration of long-term outcomes, because life is a little bit more than just what's going to happen in the next 15 minutes and the pleasure you get for the next meal, or whatever it is that you're going to go do. There's more to life than that. So anyway, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. Hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. I'll be back to you Thursday with more news.